This is going to be a quick start uh, introduction to the TPO, Time Price Opportunity Profile, and Sierra Chart. Got a request for this a few times, and uh, I think it's a good time to show everybody so you don't spend so much time during your two to three week trial uh, trying just to figure out how to you know manage this platform. So this is the software. It opens up here to what's called a chart book. It's like a like a tab in the in a, in a browser or something like that, and you can have multiple ones open here. Um, so this is just what it opens to blank. And the first thing you'll want to do is come up here to file and click find symbol. And this will pull up all the different instruments they have, uh, as well as the different markets that they trade on. And this one, I'll use the S and P E mini futures, which is on the CME. And because I've done this before, I'm just going to come down to the MES, click the December because that's where we are. And then you have the option here to do historical or intraday. Uh, you do have the option of doing this later, so you can change this at any time, so it's not difficult. So whatever you choose here is not set in stone. But what I'll do now is just the intraday charts. And this is going to be the default that it loads. All right, so this is the default. Like I said, the first thing you're going to want to do is put your time price opportunity study in there, the TPO study. In the system, they do call it a TPO, so don't search for time price. But what you wanna do, and one of the most important uh, keys to get, you know, shortcuts to get used to in this software is F6. So if I just hit F6, you can see it's gonna bring up the chart studies. Now, here on this screen, you can put whatever studies you want to. You can put in volume, you can put in uh, candlesticks, you can do whatever you want. but this video will just be about putting that time price opportunity. At any time, you can get to the studies by pressing F6. So if you're putting a new one in there or you want to go modify your existing profile, hit F6 and it'll take you to the settings. Another way of doing this is by coming up to your bar at the top and hitting analysis and studies. And, and there's that F6 shortcut. All right, so let's get into the time price. Again, you can type in TPO and it will go right down to it. And they do not call it the time price, it's the TPO. So you, you can double click it here or you can highlight it and add it with this button. Either way, it'll get it on there. Uh, and the first thing you can see what it did for me was open up uh, the settings. But I just want to put it in here first to show it comes up. So it's in here and I need to hit either apply or OK. And it's loaded it for me. This is your default out of the box. You can see that each profile starts in the extended hours. I'm in uh, Denver, Colorado, so that's 2.15. Uh, and you can see that this is what it does. It starts a new one every single uh, day. It looks like it runs for 24 hours. So the obvious thing, obvious thing that you're going to want to do first is look at some of these settings that you're working with. You use F6 to reach your studies, but you can hit F5 to pull up chart settings. And that's your other second, you know, favorite shortcut in this program. So I'm going to hit F5 now. And I'm going to pull this up. One of the things to notice is that it currently is uh, loading 30 days of data and you can quickly do that. I also mentioned that you're able to come in here and change your chart type after the fact. This is an intraday, and I'm going to leave it there. And then the other thing to note is down in this section. What you've got is you're, you're uh, separating your session times. And so you'll see, you know, as I just showed you, each of these is running a, a new 24-hour period. So the first thing to do is I'm out here in Colorado, like I said, so I'm on mountain time. So the market opens at 730 and runs until about 215. And then I've got my evening session set up to start a second later and run to a second before the market starts. So you want to make sure you've got those uh, currently uh, set up. And this is just the default for me. So hopefully your system does the same. Now I'm going to hit F6. And I the first thing I want to do is separate these profiles out. So I want each one to, uh, I want a new profile for the regular trading hours and I want a new profile in the evening. So. I'll hit F6, and this is where you can start to modify the settings within that study. So within the, the TPO profile, time price opportunity um, profile study. So I'm going to hit F6. It's going to pull us back up into this, and I'm going to select the study. I'm going to hit settings. 
So there's a lot of settings up here. I'm not going to be able to go through them all because it's just too much to do in one in one uh, video. But the one thing that I was just mentioning is looking for that place where I can separate the day session from the evening session. And I can never remember where any of this is. So you just have to come through this and look for the settings. And so here it is. New period at day session when using evening session. So let's separate those out. And you can now see it starts at 7.30, another one at 2.15 that runs right up until the next morning. And this is just that little settlement period uh, on Friday. The other thing you can see here is it's got all these highlights and, and things. And, and so, you know, those are the kind of things that you want to come in here and start to play with. Um, this here is likely the initial balance range, which I call the IBR. Um, and these are the things that you can come in and settings and do. So I'm going to hit F6 again to get into these settings. And I'm back here. So a few things that you can start to do. Um, one of the things is if you can, you can see that this is based on ticks. And so if I do four ticks, for instance, you can, I'm going to hit apply and watch this profile, for instance, out here to the left. And you can see it starts to break some of those apart. If I were to do, um, let's do like 12. Then each of these is representing, you know, four, what is that? Uh, three points, but I usually do it by one point, four ticks. Um, other things you can do is you can set your period length. So if I wanted to do, let's say I wanted to do uh, two weeks instead of one. So it, it, by the way, it reads kind of down the page like this. So if you're doing it by days, each one of these is going to be a day for me. If I wanted to group them in days of three, I could do that. And you can see we're on the 10th down here. Let's just get out of here. I've grouped it in days of three, so I can do, you know, what is that? Three days here, three days starting here, three days starting there. Um, but that, you know, doesn't make any sense. So I came back to the settings and let's just stick that with one. Uh, if you wanted to do these by weeks, you could do weeks here. So there's a lot of optionality uh, inside this. You just have to get used to reading this from top to bottom. Uh, and the first time you do it, it'll feel very foreign, but that's the way it is uh, in this program. The standard is for these blocks to be based on 30 minute periods. And then let's just continue to work down. Um, a lot of these, so let's highlight it, the profile open and that's gonna be the little arrow that, um, or in this case, sorry, the orange um, block. And so you can mess with a lot of those whether you want them on or off. So let's, you know, if I exper experiment here and hit no, I can hit apply. And that, that orange block I pointed out is gone. A lot of this is just going to take a lot of trial and, uh, and error in your part. But the other thing I wanted to show too uh, was to come in here and you'll notice that my profiles always have the, the letters. You can change these to letters here. Hit apply and you can see now the profile is starting to print letters. Um, another thing I'll note just since I just now did it, uh, you can see out here in the margins you have your price. And in this margin, you have dates. If you just hold down control and you can kind of drag, uh, click and drag your cursor, you can start to experiment with sizing, sizing your charts. Uh, in this case, you'll see that the letters are starting to get scrunched up. So maybe the next thing I want to do is go back to the settings by hitting F6. And let's make those letters a little smaller. So if I hit settings, Remember, I just changed this to letters. Let's change the font size. So I have it at 10. Uh, let's set it at four so it's uh, noticeably different. And now the profile is starting to come together. It's automatic that they're highlighting the value area for you. So you've got the white area, which represents where price spent 70% of the time. Here, 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 here. And you've got the point of control here, the pink through the middle. And then you've got your other letters that are just this uh, green color. So the next thing I may want to do is start to personalize this, give it uh, at least a color that's going to be uh, maybe a little more enjoyable to look at than, than 
that's green. So again, hitting F6, if I come into the settings again, what we've done is start to do some of the structural parts of the profile. And that's kind of layer one. But if you come here to subgraphs, which I think is you know probably not appropriately named because they're not really subgraphs. These are more of your design characteristics and start to put a theme together. So layer one is going to be setting up the profile, whereas layer two is starting to give it uh, <clears throat> some 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 look and feel. You can see that you have to come through, and again, it's like reading from top to bottom, just to come through and start to to, to see what's already in here, uh, what the default is, and, and change it to your own preference. So I'm going to come down. I'm just going to kind of quickly go through these. You've got open marker color that I pointed out earlier for me is orange. And you can change that just by clicking there. But let's change the, uh, the block colors. I want to go white block white block so i've got all the you can see all the blocks out here just turn white the next thing i can do i'm going to keep the uh, point of control pink and then the next thing i want to do is change the color of the value area so here's the value area if i click this and give it the blue color that's the theme that i've got on my uh on my profiles now um, you'll see, and the thing that I, I mentioned earlier is you've got all these lines everywhere. Uh, for what for what I'm doing now, usually keeping it simple, I, I just kind of get rid of some of that stuff because for me it's clutter right now. It's just extra noise in the equation. And so I'm going to hit F6, go back to settings, and then this is where it gets a little tricky. You just have to start to play with uh, the settings to try to find what you're doing. So. <clears throat> excuse me in this uh, instance you've got these extension lines and I'm gonna turn these uh, sorry I'm gonna turn these ignored let's see if that hides them it doesn't um, all right so those are still showing up And sorry about this, but it just takes. Uh, so, anyways, you know that this is going to be something that I have to play around with. And, and since I'm making this video now, I'm not gonna um, not gonna make you sit here while I click around. But in any case, that's that's sort of the basis of getting this set up. So, I know that the software seems tricky, but you can see that this just took me a few minutes of clicking around. Uh, and and the other question that I get a lot is about DOM. So, the depth of market is just going to be an ongoing running. Um, box that's just giving you all the trades that are coming into the market and so at any point in time i can just click file here and then open the trading dom for chart um and here it is it's going to just show me all the you know the open limit orders that are at each um in each column at each price and so that's you know that's something that you can start to look at this is actually a really nice way to make your trades so you can click here and you can see it pulls this up do you want to uh sell here and, and i don't really want to do that but you know it, it's very simple and that's how you get your <clears throat> your your position in the final thing I'll, I'll talk about on the dom is just because i know people are interested in, in putting in some of the live time and sales that are coming and the way you can do that is once you have this DOM open, you can hit trade, uh, trade, chart DOM settings. Actually, that's not the one. It's trade and this is what you want to do. Customize chart trade DOM columns. And this is when you can start to add, uh, put these like bid size in ask size in you can move these up using this over here and get your uh get everything in in order the columns uh, the order you want the columns in so um i'm gonna leave it at that because i wanted just to show how to get this set up because i think there's a you know a misconception that it's incredibly difficult but here you go um hopefully this will save you some time when you're using a trial and uh i'll end it there